my name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire is finally out of its early access phase into full release v.1.0 and all of that. And in order to celebrate, we are going to be restarting the series from episode one, as I imagine you might have seen in the title, as well as the save file. We're going to say goodbye to 852 hours of progress and 100% completion and instead hello to all these locked buttons over all of the different things that I take for granted in the base game. So, I intend for this first couple of episodes of this new series to be a little more tutorialized. I'll explain the mechanics a little bit more than I usually would in my previous series. Uh, the reason for that is because I want this to serve as the possible jumping in point for anyone who's just started watching my videos on this game, or just started watching content for this game in general, or is just still learning the mechanics of the game. So, we'll start here with the only character we have access to, the ATHB-99 Gold Holding Ironclad. The remaining soldier of the Ironclad sold his soul to harness demonic energies. Uh, you begin with the Relic Burning Blood. At the end of combat, heal for 6 HP. And we've still got 5 more levels of unlock to complete. Ooh. I should make sure that I have the right settings on display. Summed up damage in gold, block damage in blue, disable confirmation, fast mode, and quick select. Beautiful. Yep, 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 yep. Those are all the things that I typically have. All right. So we're not going to have a Nyao here at the very start, right? Oh, dang. Nyao is a character that typically appears when you start a new run to give you a small bonus and a pat on the back. And unfortunately, we're not going to be encountering them because we haven't yet died. Nyao in lore being the character who revives you and sets you back upon the dungeon. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking for a path that has enough of the rest type spaces, as well as enough of the elite type spaces. Rests so that I can upgrade my cards, and elites so that I can defeat them in order to take their powerful relics. Defeat enemies by playing cards from your hand. Cards cost energy to play. Uh, once you are out, end your turn. At the start of your turn, new cards are drawn and your energy is replenished, so your hand does not stay outside of mitigating factors like retain typically you will discard your entire hand at the end of the turn and draw a new hand that means that things like card advantage that exist in other games uh, aren't necessarily the same or applicable concepts in this game uh, play defensive cards to gain block when enemies are about to attack you block reduces incoming attack damage but wears off at the start of your next turn during your turn, you can observe an enemy's intent above them. If an enemy intent is, uh, or if an enemy rather is intent on attacking you, be sure to gain some block. So we can see the enemies are actually trying to pitch in 11 damage total here. However, instead of blocking twice, I know that I will heal 6 HP at the end of combat. So I'm fine with only blocking for the standard 5 here. Actually, I should turn off the screen check. One sec. Beautiful. I'm fine with standing off and accepting six damage there because I know I'm about to heal it immediately back up. It just helps me be a little more aggressive. Okay, so potions. Uh, you can drink or throw potions during combat and they stay with you between rooms. So this is our first card selection. This is a deck building card game. Uh, so that means that you start with a deck of relatively poor cards and over the course of the game, you can introduce more cards to your deck that are more powerful and cut the cards in your deck that aren't particularly powerful in order to form a consistent strategy. So I'll be taking an armament here, gain five block, upgrade a card in your hand for the rest of combat. The upgrade of that card allows you to upgrade all cards in your hand for the rest of combat, which can be particularly powerful. So every card has one level of upgrade save the edge cases where they can be upgraded multiple times but not important right now uh to upgrade a base card typically just adds three to it so you get three extra damage on a strike you get three extra block on a defend uh bash however gets two extra damage and one extra vulnerable vulnerable being a status effect that you can put on your enemies that will force them to take 50 percent more damage from your attacks so we have no more cards left in our draw pile so we will draw the final card and then shuffle our discard pile to draw from afterwards. Okay. 
I'm gonna play relatively defensively here because now I've got two upgraded copies of defend in my deck, which means that I'm gonna be really, really capable of taking out this enemy without taking much damage myself. Pommel Strike, Disarm, Thunderclap. We need to pick up some aggressive cards here, so I'll take a Pommel Strike. It's also worth noting that Pommel Strike draws cards, so it could be quite good to have and play before I play Armaments, so that then Armaments upgrades more cards. Okay. Beautiful. Combust, Rage, Warcry, Dropkick, Seversoul, Bandage, Up, and Sadistic Nature. Unfortunately, we can't afford any of these relics. We've got the Pocket Watch. Whenever you play three or less cards during your turn, draw three additional cards at the start of your next turn. Anchor, start each combat with 10 block, and Souvenir, start each combat with one artifact. An artifact negates a debuff. I think I probably actually just take the copy of Combust here to make AoE fights a little bit better for myself right now. Just because they're currently going to be a little bit of an issue. All good. Just upgrade one of these strikes. Beautiful. And the other one. Not that it was necessary, but still. Cleave Clash Battle Trance. I do really like Battle Trance, and it has the same bonus I was talking about before, in that it'll give me a larger hand to upgrade with the armaments. As you walk into a room, you hear a gurgling and grinding of metals. Before you is a slime-like creature that ate too much scrap for its own good. From the center of the creature, you see a glimpse of strange light, perhaps something magical. It looks like you can get some treasure if you just reach inside its opening. However, the acid and sharp objects may hurt. I'm just going to go super deep on this. It increases the amount of damage you take every single time, but also the chance of getting the relic. So we've just attained our first relic here. Relics found throughout the spires grant unique bonuses that retain throughout your entire run. They can be found by defeating powerful foes, so elites, uh, all within chests. So the effect of this is Regal Pillow. Whenever you rest at a campfire, heal for an additional 15 HP. So this is a campfire. You can see that you heal for 30% of your max HP if you rest and plus 15 from the Regal Pillar. I'm going to be choosing to upgrade armaments here so that it upgrades all cards in my hand for the rest of combat. That's like buying a bunch of upgrades for a single upgrade. It's just real efficient. So as you can see, your health retains between turns. Uh, between turns, between fights rather. And that can be a real issue. It's another... It's another resource, effectively, that you just have to manage. You can gain back health using things like Burning Blood. Some other relics also heal you. Some cards that you can play will heal you. Uh, some events will heal you. But mostly, you're relying on resting when it's necessary. Twin Strike, Clothesline, and Warcry. I'll take a Clothesline there happily. More than happy to use my first potion. That was an explosive potion. Does 10 damage in AoE. Ooh, yes. Shrug it off. Just gain 8 block and draw 1 card. Oldly smooth stone. Start each combat with 1 dex. Hell yes. Do quite like that. Okay, so I now get to set up my combust. Then get a nice broad armaments upgrade there. This turn, I'll be looking to wake up the enemy by hitting them with probably Clothesline. If that applies Weaken to them, which makes their attacks deal 25% less damage for as many turns as it's applied for. Easy shrug it off and Clothesline. Great. So this is an elite enemy. Uh, they're much more difficult than the average enemy. However, if you defeat them, you get a Relic. Yeah, I just have to go for attacks here. Using armaments would be irresponsible. Goodbye, Log Vulan. Hello, Vajra. Start each combat with one strength. Beautiful. Uh, power cards. Okay. <clears throat> so you've seen attack and skill cards. Attack cards being the cards that I used to attack, and skill cards being the ones that didn't necessarily attack. Uh, there's also a type of card called a power card. Uh, they are passive abilities that remain for the duration of combat. 
So you can tell them by the different borders that they have. Power cards are circular. There's a little bit of a squareness to skill cards and a little bit of triangularity to your attacks. I'll be taking another copy of Shrug It Off, though. Extremely powerful here. Uh, so, Big Fish. As you make your way down a long corridor, you see a banana, a donut, and a box floating about. No, upon closer inspection, they're tied to strings coming from holes in searing? ceiling. rather. There's a quiet cackling from above as you approach the objects. What do you do? I can either gain max HP, gain current HP, or gain a relic, but also get a curse. A curse is another type of card that is typically, but not always, unplayable and has a negative impact. So not only does it have the negative impact written on the card, which is at the end of your turn, lose HP equal to the number of cards in your hand, but it's also negating a draw. So you draw five cards a turn. If one of those cards is a curse, you've only drawn four usable cards that turn. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the max HP here. I almost always do. Excellent. Not a half bad opening hand here. I do quite like the fact that we have the Oldly Smooth Stone this early as well as the Vajra this early. It just feels like all of our equipment's been upgraded. Like a mini upgrade, but an upgrade nonetheless. Alright. Down you go. Smoke Bomb is escape from a non-boss combat. Receive no rewards. As well as we also have the Gambler's Brew. Discard any number of cards and then draw that many. And the Swift Potion. Draw three cards. Alright. Rewards. Don't forget your rewards. You can just click on them to pick them up. Now, this is actually an important point to make about any deck building game. You don't have to compare... You don't have to think, is this card good for my deck? You have to think, is this card better than not having this card? Having a smaller deck oftentimes lends itself towards a much more consistent draw and a much more consistent win strategy. Uh, and that tends to be the archetype that I prefer to go for. So unless I really want something, I try to avoid picking up that many cards. Okay. Well, I guess I will just go for the combust here. The Gremlin Knob gains more powerful every time you play a skill, and for that reason, I'm very, very, very scarcely playing them here. Because I don't want to make them super powerful and then have them dunk on me. Blood Vial at the start of each combat. Heal for 2 HP. Beautiful. Body Slam, Burning Pact. We don't really have damage in the deck yet. I'll take a Body Slam, happily. Taking only one damage this turn. More than fine with that. Oh, these Shrug It Offs are just so powerful right now. Come on, and... Really? Hey, there we go. Uh, another body slam? I'll take it. So, body slam deals damage equal to your block and upgrades to be zero cost. Important, that. Because it means I can spend my entire turn defending and then just turn around and bop the enemy some. So, this is the boss for the floor. Much harder than any enemy we've fought so far. Uh, it also looks like our draw is particularly bad here. So, I'm going to use the gambling's brew. Gambling's brew. Gambler's brew, rather. To throw away that hand. Okay. Uh, if I just strike three times, I can actually break the opponent's mode shift, which will actually change their intent because they'll change to a defensive mode. That's the gimmick of this boss. Okay. Definitely hit him with the weakness there. Beautiful. Six by two is super easy to deal with here. Uh, the enemy also has sharp hide. Whenever you play an attack, deal three damage back. Uh, so I have to make sure that I had excess block there before I wanted to use my attack. Definitely should have used the body slam there. I didn't think I had all of the body slams upgraded. I'd forgotten, frankly. Okay. 
That's more than fine. I'm just buying myself time to upgrade the rest of my deck. Don't mind me. Is this enemy... No, this enemy has dealt damage to me already. Okay. That's unfortunate. Energy cost. Cards require energy to play. The orb on the bottom left indicates how much energy you have remaining for the turn. So one out of three. Damn. Just a triple block there easily. Mmm. Really? I just wanted defensive cards. That's all I wanted because then the body slams are free. Oh, well. One HP from having put the Guardian on the ground there. That's okay. We'll get them yet. So this is the first act of the game. There are a total of three acts in the game. With a sneaky fourth, if you're nasty. Sec. Each of them ends with a boss, starts with a normal fight, and your goal is titular. Slay the spire. Go through the entire uh, entire tower, all of the axe, and win. So here we have a choice of rare cards. There's four different rarities of cards in base character sets, and that is starter card then basic cards they don't have differentiated coloring borders on those two but starter card basic card so the starter cards start in your deck obviously uh, and then there's uncommon cards with the blue banners on them and then the yellow banners for rare cards rare cards have unique effects oftentimes effects that you can build your deck around so here we've got fiend fire exhaust all cards in your hand exhaust meaning you remove them from your deck until the end of combat uh, and you deal 7 damage for each exhausted card. It also exhausts itself. There's also Barricade. Block is not removed at the start of your turn. And Reaper. Deal 4 damage to all enemies. Enemies, or rather, you will heal for all unblocked damage. We'll take the Barricade there more than happily because we already have 2 Body Slams, 2 Shrugados. Like, it seems like we could just block forever. Now here we have a choice of Boss Relics. Uh, boss relics are unique in that you can only get them from fighting bosses, uh, hence the name. Uh, we've got two effects here. The potions always appear in combat rewards, and for every five cards in your deck, heal three HP whenever you enter a rest site uh, that don't give you an extra energy. But we do have an example of an energy relic. That is, Busted Crown. Gain energy at the start of your turn. Future card rewards, you have two less cards to choose from. I'll be taking that because I already have a reasonably well-formed deck and I need the extra energy because I have some very expensive cards in the deck. Uh, the Barricade in particular comes to mind. Okay. I feel like I probably tutorialized enough for this episode and I'm going to get more into just gameplay. Hell yeah. We'll shrug it off first because Battle Trance carries. You cannot draw additional cards this turn as a negative. And I typically target the backline mugger first rather than the looter. And that's because the backline mugger has a bigger attack that they can do, uh, do on a certain turn. Alright. It's probably bash body slam here. Seems right. Oh, and yeah, that's extremely lethal. Just a casual 51. Perfected Strike. It does two additional damage for all of your cards that contain the word strike in them. We, that That's a completely different archetype at this point. We've kind of already decided on how we're going to be building. Okay. 19 damage as well as I get to keep my block every single turn here. Quite lovely. Easily go for another shrug it off. Oh. Perfect. Come on, Guardian. There's nothing you can do up against this. 
Disarm. Enemy loses two strength. Exhaust. Upgrades to be three strength. Eh, still not particularly interested in taking it, though. I want as many question marks as possible so that I can encounter events like this. Remove a card from my deck for 75 gold. More than happy to. The beggar takes off their cloak to reveal that he's the cleric. You're a kind soul. Receive my purification, he screams. You're not sure if he's grateful or mad. I'll remove a basic strike in order to make my deck better. Find some potions. Sure. I'll take a block potion here, which gains 12 block. I'll also drop this smoke potion in order to take a swift potion, which is just draw three cards. In fact, I will be using one of them here now as well because we have a really, really poor hand. Just like nothing doing. Great. Now we're frail, which means we gain 25% less block from cards for two turns. All right. So we will be taking a little bit of damage here, but that's okay. We've already got our barricade up. So now we can just kind of block into ridiculous excess whenever we want. Look at all that ridiculous excess of one. And should be able to push over the snake plant at this, right? Infernal Blade, add a random attack to your hand. It costs zero this turn. Thank you. Uh, I do want to upgrade Barricade and Battle Trance because those are cards that I'll oftentimes play before I play my Armament. Ooh, that's not great. Hmm. So I definitely want to weaken this enemy. It's extremely important. I think I'm also going to use Block Potion that turn just to have extra damage. Dang. Got the barricade at the worst possible time. Couldn't play it. I did know I was going to be drawing the rest of my deck there, so I just shouldn't have done it. Okay. At least the barricade's now set up. Battle trance before we armament so that we can upgrade more cards. Do your worst. Well, it was definitely your worst. Alright, applying Weaken here is incredibly important. Takes so much damage away from the enemy here. Goodbye, Book of Stabbing. Hello, Happy Flower. If the returns gain an energy. There's also a dual wheel tick. Choose a copy, uh, choose an attack or a power card. Add a copy of that card into your hand. We'll be taking that because we can use it to copy our body slam multiple times. And in this deck, Body Slam is going to be most of our damage. Question card. Future card rewards have one additional card to choose from, which is actually super handy here. Offsets the negative from Busted Crown a little bit. I'm actually going to be copying that one. Beautiful. That bird is now dead. Next turn. We've gotten Hexed here, which means whenever we play a non-attack card, we have to shuffle it dazed into our discard pile. Not a huge fan of that, but eh, that's the way it is. So I'm going to try and limit the cards that I play that aren't attacks. Yeah. So dazed are status cards. That is another type of card in the game. Uh, they typically have... Not a real negative effect, or at least a very minor negative effect. But they still take up draw space as well. Come on, and that'll do it. Hell yeah. Liquid Bronze, gain three thorns, which means anytime anyone attacks me, they will take three damage back. Anytime they deal attack damage to me, actually. Little bit of a distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. Having our barricade on turn one and a little bit of block is just lovely here. So we're now confused, which means every single time we draw a card, we randomize that card's cost. Ooh, nice. Got a zero cost there. Oh, yeah. This is perfect. So now I'll dual wield the zero cost body slam. Just slam twice there for a ridiculous amount of damage. 
So there's a card that we're looking for to make this deck kind of really pop off to get complete. Uh, and that card is Entrench. It doubles your current block. I'll be taking none of those. Okay, we did get Barricade. That's really good. Not only that, but we also upgraded our other Body Slam. Really good first hand. Hell yes! Dual Wheel Mail the Body Slam, of course. Couldn't be happier to. That combust has been in the deck for a very short period of time, and I feel like it's quite likely it's not in the peri in the deck for much longer. We found an archetype that's just far better quite quickly. So there's a strength potion, gain two strength. Usually I would take a whirlwind or an anger there, but I'm gonna go for a kind of more pure deck than that. Uh, Chemical X. The effects of your X cost cards are increased by two. So X cost cards are cast for the remainder of your energy and take effects multiple times as a result. Uh, I could take Double Tap, because Double Tap, like Body Slam, Double Tap... Clothesline... Actually, no. I don't think I'll take any of those. Uh, I could take Karen's Ashes. Whenever you exhaust a card, deal three damage to all enemies. Or a Calcum, if you end your turn without block, gain six block. Or Chemical X. I actually think I might just remove a card. Yeah, let's get that Combust out of the deck. That's typically what I like doing, which is just removing cards from the deck to make it better. Or at least more consistent. See? Ridiculous amount of damage there. Don't need any of those. I'll drop the attack potion here for an energy potion. Now I do need to upgrade this other body slam as well. Armaments is getting worse the more cards that I upgrade, but that's okay. That's a real shame. Would have been nice if I could have got Barricade out that turn. Yeah, I can't get full block this turn anyway. Oh well. There's the Barricade. So now I've got Shrug It Off, Defend, Dual Wield the Body Slam. Damn it. We're super vulnerable. We should be entirely fine over the course of this fight, though. So the gimmick of this fight is once you get the enemy below half HP, they power up. They go super sonic and the problem's chronic. Beautiful. So now they're below... No, they're not below half HP. They're still six away. Beautiful. That'll give us more time. I think I should probably just double defend here, though. Great. So now we have a reasonable amount of block. We can get the champ to transform. Transformation takes a whole turn here, so it's effectively kind of a stun as well. And then they start launching out super powerful attacks. That's 48 damage that it's trying to do right now. Ash, clothesline, body slam. Oh, perfect. Barely anything that can be done. Dubai champ. Hello, third act. Brutality versus demon form. At the start of your turn, gain two strength on demon form. And brutality at the start of your turn, lose one HP and draw a card. I don't think I need either of them. Uh, we have the choice to take Sneko Eye here. At the start of your turn, draw two additional cards. Start each combat confused. That is the effect that randomizes a card's cost when you draw. Uh, there's also Coffee Dripper. Gain energy at the start of your turn. You can no longer rest at rest sites. And Cursed Key. Gain energy at the start of your turn. Whenever you open a non-boss chest, obtain a curse. I'm going to take the Coffee Dripper. Because we're playing a defensive deck, we're going to need to rest less often than other decks might. And we also have two other sources of healing. In the Blood Vial, healing us for 2 HP at the start of each combat. And the Burning Blood, healing us for 6 at the end. 
There is a path with a ridiculous amount of rests here. I'll take fewer rests in an earlier shop. Okay. Damn it. We're going to accomplish absolutely nothing on this turn. So the incoming damage is 19, 27 total. Now, these enemies have lifelink, which means if the other enemies are still alive, they will revive in two turns. So for that reason, we're going to be splitting our damage across so that we can kind of kill them all vaguely at the same time. We will definitely be taking some damage here, though. The setup isn't particularly quick. It begins. I basically just killed that one to prevent its incoming attack. Mm-hmm. Actually, it does super begin. This is going to be great. Yeah, we've got this. I did not think that we were going to have the kill that turn, but we did. Flame Barrier. Gain 16 block. Whenever you attack this turn, deal 6 damage back. More than happy to have a powerful block card in the stack. Uh, okay, so we touched the Tesseract here. And we can add colorless cards to our deck, which are cards that can be accessed by any character, uh, whereas the red cards can only be accessed by the ironclad outside of mitigating circumstances. For three random attacks, we can draw a while into your hand. Violence, that just gives me all of my body slams, basically. Yeah, I'm not interested. Okay, so there's another event here. Passing by a structure, you're in. Uh, wait. Passing by a structure you're certain you've previously seen, you start to question if you're going insane, or if the impossible geography of this place is starting to get to you. You need to change something and soon. That's what the voices say. Anyway, and why would they lie? So you can embrace madness, gain two copies of the madness card that we turned down before, reduce the cost of a random card in your hand to zero for the rest of the combat. Uh, we could get a curse of writhe in order to heal, or we could just lose max HP. I'll lose the max HP. Threaded Needle, Stardish Combat with four plated armor, which just means every single, at the turn, end of every single turn, we'll gain four block. But every time we take unblocked attack damage, we will lose a charge of plated armor. I'll remove another strike from the deck there. Sure, just take the 100 gold out of that shrine rather than more money, but also a regret curse. Hell yeah. So this is the Nemesis. Every other turn, they turn intangible, which means that you can only deal one damage to them per attack that turn. Still worth doing, though. Okay. Oh, lovely. We're going to have a ridiculous block value. And just a deck full of body slams at this rate as well. We'd obviously have lethal way earlier. If not for that intangibility. Oh, there's the lethal. Mango. Upon pick up, raise your max HP by 14 as well as your current HP by 14. Super useful there. You can see the rest option is grayed out. You can't access it. Great dual wheel, just in case I need to play it before I get armaments to hit it. Okay. Really good turn right there, actually. Basically just looking to bank as much block as possible so that these body slams are ridiculous. Now, unfortunately, here on the first run, I am not going to be able to access the fourth and final act in the game. Because I haven't yet unlocked it. Metallicize at the end of a turn, gain four block. Hell yes. Obviously works for this build. Pantograph, at the start of boss combat, heal for 25 HP. We have so much healing outside of resting as well. Beautiful. Unfortunately, we have to give up all of our block at the end of this turn. Because we don't yet have that dang barricade. Okay. 
Flame barrier easily. And then we can just start knocking down enemies, right? Beautiful. Yeah, we're pretty much untouchable at this point. We need to start unlocking the ascension levels, which are extra difficulty modifiers that you can add to yourself. There's 20 different levels of them, and if you are playing Ascension 20, you are playing all of those difficulty modifiers added at the same time. It can get pretty wild and really difficult. Come on, and... Not really the attack I was looking for, but that's okay. Never mind, I don't have a body slam in here to draw right now. I'm afraid that'll have to be close enough, Spiker. Sword Boomerang versus Clash. Not particularly interested in taking either of those. Just naturally upgrade these Shrug as well. Jutting out from the chaotic terrain around you, a bony sphere surrounds a mysterious glowing object within. While you're curious what lies inside, you notice some sentries keeping an eye on it. I will fight them in order to loot it. Oh, hell yes! So I'll dual wield the Metallicize here. At the end of every turn now, I am gaining 16 blood. Between my Plated Armor and my Metallicize. Which is pretty good. I weaken the backline of target because they were doing more damage that turn, and weakness is not like a, a direct removal of damage. It is scaling. So since it's a percentage, you should apply it to the highest incoming attack. Usually. Right. One, two, three. Beautiful. This fight is extremely over. They have put a bunch of burns in my deck. Status cards that deal two damage to you at the end of turn. Magic Flower! Healing is 50% more effective during combat. That will affect Pantograph as well as the Blood Vial and the Burning Blood. We have so much HP now. Whew. Alright. Not... A huge fan of how this is going down right now. Could have gotten more block on turn one right there. So now we'll actually lose a charge of our plated armor. So now we're only getting three block at the end of each turn. <clears throat> so our boss this floor is the awakened one who will punish us for playing powers. But that's okay. We'll be fine. It'll hardly even bother us. That's two of them dead. Just due to attacking me. And the final joins them. So Searing Blow is an example of a card that can be upgraded multiple times. And every time you upgrade it, it gets one more damage than the previous upgrade. Or rather, its damage increases by one more than the increase of the previous upgrade. Okay. Still no turn one barricade. I don't know, I'm just horribly aggrieved every time. That said, I still feel like it's going pretty well. This isn't even an elite, they just have a bunch of HP. Hell yes. Doesn't even take down half of my remaining block. Not getting anywhere with that. And yeah, body slam for the kill. Easy. Essence of Steel, gain four plated armor. That's actually probably a lot better than a strength potion for us because we don't really use that many attacks. So the strength potion is not particularly powerful for us. Uh, no, I'll just upgrade the shrug it off. It's okay. All right, so this is our final boss fight. Shrug it off first. Uh, not really finding great cards here. 
I will use the Essence of Steel earlier rather than later, as well as the Liquid Bronze, because this is definitely our final battle. So the Awakened One has an ability called Curiosity, which is whenever you play a power, it will gain one strength. So I don't want to play that many powers if I can avoid them, so I should really only play the ones that are particularly integral to our deck. I'll also weaken the backliner so that I don't take damage this turn. Barricade has to be played. It is an example of something that is integral to our deck. Right. And yeah, it looks like we're pretty much in the clear at this point. Just need to weaken and also gain block wherever it's available. I would love to dual wield Metallicize. Actually, you know what? The enemy at worst does four extra damage because it gets one extra strength per power I play and it has a four times hit. So at most it can do four extra damage for each power I play. And these give me four block. So sure, I'll just gain that. Definitely hit that draw. Oh, hell yes. Completely kill the Awakened One. And... It revives. However, it no longer has the ability previously. So if I did want to play more... More powers, this would be a great time to do it. Alright. Easy kill right there. We, in fact, actually got a perfect on that as well. We deal 838 damage to the heart. That's our first victory wrapped up easily. There's a score that they provide to you at the very end with a bunch of different multipliers, as well as, hell yes, our first unlocks. So we got Heavy Blade, Limit Break, and Spot Weakness. So this is a new archetype, obviously being introduced or supported a little bit more. That is the Strength Build archetype. And we've unlocked our next character, the Silent, who we'll be playing in the next episode. Until then... My name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. Ooh. As we've completed a run towards being able to unlock that fourth act. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.